Republican candidates are now focusing on the next primary following New Hampshire's poll Tuesday night. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney came out on top with almost 40 percent of the vote, followed by Ron Paul with 23 percent and John Huntsman with nearly 17 percent. Next was Newt Gingrich and Rick Santorum, each getting just under 9.5 percent of votes. The next race is in South Carolina, where both campaign and outside super PAC spending will ramp up in the days to come. But one candidate, Buddy Romer, is committing to a race free from corporate dollars. From Manchester, FSRN's Alice Olstein has the story. In his victory speech Tuesday evening, Mitt Romney told supporters that first place finishes in both New Hampshire and Iowa aren't a sign they can coast through the rest of the campaign. You know, tonight we celebrate, tomorrow we go back to work. On the other side of town, supporters of all ages packed into a hotel ballroom to celebrate Ron Paul's second place showing, cheering as he promised to drastically cut spending, respect civil liberties, and bring U.S. troops home. After a shower of confetti and rock music, third place winner and former China ambassador John Huntsman told a crowd of supporters that his old fashioned handshaking campaign style paid off. I'd say third place is a ticket to ride, ladies and gentlemen. Despite finishing with less than 1% of the New Hampshire vote, Buddy Romer is also looking ahead. Still unknown to much of the voting public, the former Louisiana governor, congress member, and entrepreneur is the only Republican candidate to reject corporate money, and has even capped individual donations to his campaign at $100. He's also the only candidate to fully embrace the Occupy movement. What I like about Occupy is, is their nose. They smell corruption. You know, some Herman Cain and Newt made fun of them for how they smelled. I stand with them for what they smell. Despite a network of volunteers and grassroots support in several states, Romer is stuck in somewhat of a catch-22. He needs to raise money to be allowed to debate, but he needs to debate to get the exposure necessary to raise money. When you deliberately devise a campaign that depends on a large number of small transactions, it needs exposure so that a large number of average citizens will connect the dots and say, yeah, that makes sense. Romer has not been allowed to take part in any of the 18 nationally televised debates held thus far, but he has participated in his own way, posting his answers to the debate questions in real time on Twitter, where he has nearly 16,000 followers. Now, most candidates have set their sights on South Carolina, which will hold its primary on January 21st. The super PAC backing Newt Gingrich has already unleashed a $3.4 million ad blitz there, going after Romney's career in private equity. The super PAC supporting Romney is answering the challenge with an expensive media buy of its own. And Rick Santorum recently announced a $1 million ad campaign to boost his profile after a disappointing fifth place finish in New Hampshire. Though Romer says his message and his accent would play well in South Carolina, he can't afford the $35,000 required to get his name on the ballot there. So he's striking a different course, to Michigan and Arizona. In Michigan, we'll talk about jobs, specifically trade. And in Arizona, we'll talk about immigration, uh, how to become a citizen, and changes that we need to make in that process. But in both cases, jobs and immigration, it starts with the money. I, I want a Congress and a president who concentrates on what the people need rather than what the money needs. Romer is also considering running with Americans Elect, which will hold its party convention online in June. Any registered voter can become a delegate, and an Americans Elect ticket can join together candidates from different parties and ideological backgrounds. At a time when both Democrats and Republicans are relying on super PACs and Wall Street dollars to finance their campaigns, Romer says he may have to turn to a third party to better represent his platform. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Manchester.